Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you. And welcome to this first talk of uh, the whole day of the new virtual DDD distributed domain driven design day talk a conference. Thank you for joining us. With me today is Kim Kao and Arthur Cheng from the DDD Taiwan community. And they will uh, show you a video about the Agricris Canvas, a fluent way to talk through strategic modeling to tactical design. You, if you're watching the stream, if you have any questions, please uh, ask so in live chat and Arthur and Kim will reply to you on the chat. So enjoy, and we're gonna start the video now. Okay, let's go. Good day, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for all being here. I'm very glad to have this opportunity to share with you. Before starting my session, I would like to say thank you to uh, virtual DDD so community Jeff organizers and and to host the distributed DDD day around the world. This made the DDD Taiwan community could have the chance to share what we learned on the problem solving journey. Today, I will also invite my friend Arthur Zhang to co speech in this session, and he is also the DDD Taiwan community co organizer. Let me introduce myself a bit. My name is Kim Gao. Uh, Mandarin name is Gao Yikai. A father of two kids, one daughter, one son. I live in Taiwan. Perhaps in these days, you have already get pretty much information towards COVID-19. Uh, we have an excellent epidemic prevention result in Taiwan. Be honestly speaking, that would be give a credit to our government and responsive citizens. Besides, Taiwan is an island full of passionate guys who work hard and people are friendly to passengers. We have incomparable technical and non-technical communities. We have more activities here and distributed in very diversity categories, but we just don't have a DDD community in Taiwan when time went back to 2018. So Arthur and I, we volunteered to co-organize it and try to get connected with you guys uh, in the world. At the initial time, I'm also as a picture. I play softball and basketball in a few public tournaments. Now I'm working in Amazon Web Service and really love serverless architectures and a few event-driven architecture. I also willing to facilitate or guide uh, my customer or community people to implement the solutions via DDD approach and run it on AWS. Starting from 2018, I co-worked with several teams. Um, my customers and, and my team are always talk about how to construct or design solutions on top of AWS. But there is one critical problem that was all of the stakeholders always talk about how to use the services, how to use the technicals at first, such as uh, they are talking about the container, serverless DevOps topics, and more serverless service mesh, etc. There is only a few number of people who tend to invest a few time and resources to realize why they need this new solution and what to do to fulfill these expectations, and went for how to do with practical implementations. I started to try to have some conversation with my customers and felt that they are curious to know how to do business transformation. At least existing legacy systems couldn't provide the needed capabilities to serve all of the new challenges. Maybe sometimes they just feel they need a new created purchase channel to serving the whole change, especially when sometimes they have created more and more variety transaction channels and realized that the existing transaction service couldn't provide the least capability to do so. So more and more experimental functions in market and lead them to try to have a new syringe to go. But in this scenario, silo organizations leads to this result. They don't 
don't have capability and don't want to collaborate with each other. So the basis knowledge was gone. Nobody knows the whole picture. Meanwhile, a few passionate volunteers would like to take a chance to introduce DDD and perhaps some event storming workshop for those organizations. However, the classic DDD is then not an easy learning journey without a mentor facilitating. Even if we try to leverage a lightweight event storming workshop to walk through all of these stakeholders, that would be a good chance to crunch whole picture of problem domain. But there is still a critical problem is how to make these stickers, sign, arrows into code implementation. That's all the gap. Gap are exactly exist. Gap is like distance far from technical to business. Gap from silo organizations lack of collaboration and the, the biggest gap from the DDD theory to coders preference is they always like a show, don't tell. Perhaps you also experience the same scenario like this. You load all of the expectation to build new solutions to serve all what I mentioned the requirement. And you just grab the new weapon, the so-called DED or event storming workshop. But while you are practicing it, but the uncertainty sometimes nearly do fall into a dangerous stage. Maybe we try to do our best effort to escape from the dangerous stage. From the big ball of mod source code burden. If we just take all of the classic guidance without a responsive attitude to adjust to the way we have to, then the value might be a must. So based on the experience, we want to have a more reliable, concrete activities to identify the considerations among each event storming workshop steps. That could be a help. So, okay, how do we start the first step? I would say drop off all of your understanding. Don't tack yourself as an expert toward to any specific problem domain. No matter how familiar you are, no matter how many times you had tech participate with, what you see is not always as a truth as real. I would like to challenge you guys a pretty simple question. Ask yourself, what is the max value of a dice? You definitely have the answer. Please respond to my question in mind as quick as possible, and then wait for three seconds. See? The value could be higher than six, right? Your answer is probably six, I guess. However, things not always run as you expected but run with the fact and the invariant constraint. What is the invariant constraint? As for the dice example, there is only one flat line on the table and the rest construct the polygonal cube. And the max value of the dice is the total number of the flats. Let example reflect the truth that your understanding or imaginations might not be a truth so leave the responsibilities to workshop attendees. Encourage attendees to ask the max expert frequently to see what's the difference from your opinions and the real experts. So now we know that you see might not be a truth. To prevent this curse of knowledge, the best way is to explore the business journey by yourself. I had run a few practice by well-known business case coffee shop. Using this ex of use example to demonstrate how we can mitigate the gap between theory and real practice in event storming workshop. So, okay, let's start to the scenario in coffee shop case. For now, I will try to talk a bit more about this story. Hope it could help you fall into this scenario. Imagine that today you just happen to visit your coffee shop and plan to watch all of these DDDDA video sessions there. 
you walk to a street corner and you are attracted by the classic brick wall decoration. In a short flash, you decide to walk in and enjoy all of the sessions there. And perhaps you also invite your bodies to come together. Then you can know more about what are people thinking about and learn a lot of DTD concept to help your team and your organization. You walk into the cafe and was immediately greeted by the huge enchanting menu on the wall. There is a wide variety of beverage to choose from. The counter staff welcomes you and you placed an order for two cups of latte. He asks you to have a seat and then the coffee will be served to you in a few moments. The seats near the window are mostly occupied. You look for a table with four seats as they look more comfortable. The barista received the coffee order which you ordered from the counter staff. He brewed the beans, prepared the milk, and made the coffee. A waiter delivered the coffee to you with a smile and also give you the receipt. Then you just look at the receipt and was surprised that because the coffee is promoting a national Black Coffee Day, if you order for one cup of Americano, then you could buy one, get one, and it's on Friday only. About half an hour later, your colleague arrived and began the discussion um, the DDD sessions, and you are enjoying the, for all the sessions here. After a few sessions, you watch you here, and then you and your colleague had a great discussion, and then after with several new ideas, the cafe waiter cleaned the table in preparation for the next customer. Okay, so that's all the scenario from the tea time. Let's crunch the truth which happened in the story in the next slice. As most of the event storming facilitators' recommendation, once we started to crunch the knowledge in the scenario, the first step is to figure out the key basis event in your problem domain. In this example, we could easily find out a couple of events are worth to divide. I know, I'm sure that you might could have more and more events you could easy to figure out. But what I listed is that the nine events are more common cases you might experience. It's a key milestone now. When you figure out all of these events, the next step is to think about which intention Mac list event occurred. Perhaps it come from a specific command. So as a recommended naming convention, all of the commands are always past tense. You could easily to find out the commands. If you can't, then perhaps the event name might not be the good one. You should reconsider about what is the current state and what's the real meaning for you. Once we have the command and event, we started to orchestrate them with a few yellow box without naming. The yellow box is the so-called aggregate. Aggregate are logical groups of command and event. That makes sense to think about them as a single unit within the business processes. With more of the scenarios being played out, the name for the aggregate should fall in place naturally. Here are some examples of aggregate naming convention. Perhaps you could name it by nouns, or perhaps you name it by genus. No matter which convention you favor, remember to present the BRT of the aggregate. That means traverse each command that the aggregate is received and make sure each event occurred is reasonable. But most of of the time, as my experience, the different stakeholders might have different opinions in current status. 
For example, domain expert might come from product owner or business analysis or marketing operator. They often feel that all of the stories are here. They could quit from the discussion and no more actions are required. Even though there are no clear user story has been explained. And from the developer's viewpoint, they just can't wait on only stickers there. He extend to keep hands dirty for code generation or some code creation, but they don't know the detailed stories toward to the current discussed aggregate. Sometimes they just go ahead and leave all of the stickers. The worst case is the basic sponsors talks. Sometimes they are forced to, to command you and team to develop solutions in time, no matter how difficult the problem you are facing or how complex the use cases you, you faced. They just can't wait on the stickers the activities because it just looks like a gaming and the sponsor don't want to waste their time on the journey. So in order to prevent this situation, Keep moving in each baby step would be a choice. We don't fall into the classic analysis paralysis problem. That would be a long time. But also keep doing a few implementation in time. Eliminate the unimportant noise as you can, such as your boards. And try to explain more user stories or use cases around the aggregate once you have. In this way, that could you help you come up with an aggregate appropriately and in time. Probably most of teams think about the activities are almost done in workshop. But okay, wait a moment. In addition to the aggregate, there is one another important element here. That is the policy. Please remind yourself what you learned from the coffee shop use cases. Aha, uh -huh. when you get a receipt and you know there is a national black coffee day, right? You can get one by one on Friday. Think about where should we put this business rule in, um, perhaps in aggregate or comment or event, or just leave it in policy itself. At first, we start from the immutable occurred event then come out the command and put the correlated logical capabilities in an aggregate. But when is the time to focus on these policies? As my experience, most of teams just leave it alone. The better one is put it on parking lot for the next chance for, to discuss. The others just often forget it or lose it. In this situation it would make Domain experts feel that although the event storming workshop is a collaboration activity, but something went wrong. There are few domain knowledge from their understanding was not discussed, even not exposed, such as the National Black COVID Day promotion campaign. They might have a lot of details we haven't discussed. But you guys just focus on the aggregate only because that is your potential service and you don't want to go for the detailed implementation. If so, the domain expert will disappoint it and leave the workshop as soon as possible. Policy to matters. So my friend Arthur Zhang will show you how to make it place the, in the discussion letter. So, okay, now we have the named aggregate. We should make sure aggregate should support all of the received commands. It's just like an abstraction of functionality. How do you make these steps reliable and reasonable? I learned a concept called the CEP. The CEP is invented by the head first domain driven design book author. His name is Stephen Allo. However, he has announced his book release date will be postponed to infinity unless there is one volunteer to keep writing this book. So if you want, please contact him. From Stephen's concept, the CEP is to capture and 
to embed and protect. Pro capture, which means to crunch domain models from common domain. If possible, also take a few user stories or use cases to represent this model. To enrich the whole story, make sure what you learned is critical and in practice. The second one is embedded. Let your design or code to speak out the domain knowledge, to reveal the capabilities in aggregate. So a test-driven design programming style is a good fit. Even to consider about to adopt VDD or TDD could help on the business capability validation, which is a good one to improve and prove the concept could be right or not. And the protect, as both of you realized, to put your implementation at the outside outer layer around the specific technology solution. The inner layer is more basic centric, just focus on the model and a very classic layered architecture design to protect it. A little tree just planted is easy to be noticed and managed, just like your first aggregate. But what if the aggregate amount are growing? You have much more and complexity ones you have. It means that if we ask you to manage the huge forest, you even can find the interwined part of this. So don't just let it grow in nature. We do this aggregate forming our process in incremental in, and uh, interactively. You always have the chance to judge how complex it is. So sometimes you need to divide your big aggregate into small part of this. But how we do that? If you found you have a huge aggregate, Follow the aggregated design principle to break it. Make sure each divided one could imply a transaction boundary. Make sure each aggregate just have be an atomic operation. And keep doing this until you feel the aggregate is controllable. So far, we have gone through the business cases in coffee shop and realized which events are important for us and we find out the corresponding commands to reveal intentions and how to name the aggregate. If we could put all of these steps on the canvas, imagine that what if we can easily move all of the stickers as you want, or add or remove them appropriately. Then all of the stakeholders could stand on the same page in time. Then there will be no technical gap. Okay, so now it's time to hand over to the talk to Arthur. He will walk you through the entire aggregate canvas steps. Here you go, Arthur. Hello, everyone. I'm Arthur Zhang, and I'm so glad everyone come to listen to this story. Here, I will introduce myself briefly. I'm currently a Danet developer and one of the co-organizers of the DDD Taiwan community. I started to study DDD about seven years ago till now. I get many inspires from DDD. It's about three years ago. I learned event storming in Beijing, China. After returning to Taiwan, I started to introduce event storming to everyone. And I got a lot of great feedback. I organized the DDD Taiwan community with Kim last year. We promote DDD including the strategy part and the tactical part of DDD. The photo on the left in this slide is the first event held after the establishment of our community. In this event, we introduced DDD, microservice and the event storming. The picture on the right is half a year, the establishment of the DDD Taiwan community. We are discussing every detail of DDD, and every participant has been inspired a lot. When we discuss more deeply, we find a problem. Many friends who participate in our activities, after learning event storming, 
They were very excited to bring them back to their company or team. Let's active partners. In addition to discussing the step of events Tommy with me, Let's Active Partners also asked me how to convert from event storming to code. I spent a lot of time looking for solutions to solve this problem. I hope to lower the learning curve and can promote the team to communicate in design so that the design knowledge is no longer just left in the head of some team members. Each team member can participate in it and obtain the substantive knowledge of the coding. This slide shows the whole of aggregate canvas. You can see there are many elements on this canvas are very close to event storming, which means that people who have learned event storming can learn this tool very quickly. Next, I will introduce the operation steps of this tool, step by step, and be as detailed as possible. This is the first step. In this step, the team members are selecting an aggregate to be designed and rewriting the comment on this aggregate, then pass it to the left button of the aggregate canvas. Although there are only four commands on this slide, it doesn't mean that only four commands can be placed, but that all commands discovered during event storming are collected as much as possible. In this step, all exploration domain events are also collected from event storming. One thing to pay special attention to is that the position of the domain event is relative to the command, which means that when we copy the domain event from event storming, we should pay attention to the correspondence between the command and the domain event. And this correspondence is not only one-to-one, -one, but it may also be one-to-many. If there is a one-to-many situation where there are a command and the domain events, it is also important to pay attention to the order of events and also recommended to show the order relationship between them from left to right. After completing the above two steps, we can start to model this aggregate because event storming itself doesn't have the known elements to represent the domain model. I mean the color and the shape of posit. Therefore, I use the yellow square posit that are more commonly used in many workshops. And then the short and narrow posit can be used to indicate the reference relationship between the elements by draw arrow. When designing the aggregate domain model, you need to refer to ubiquitous language. You can invite domain experts in the field to participate. They can help your team a lot. This step is mainly to find candidates for entity or value objects. But we don't rush to mock those that are entity or value object. During the modeling process, focus on modeling first. When all participants in the team agree that the modeling has ended, you can begin this step. In this step, participants discuss which element is suitable for serve as an entity. Then use a small dot sticker on it as a mark because it uses stickers. The team can rethink and mark the element that are more suitable for becoming entity during the continuous discussion process or later steps. The action is very simple. You only need to move the sticker to another posit. How can I tell if a domain object is an entity or a value object? I provide some indicators for you reference. When we care about the life cycle of the domain object, maybe this domain object can be a candidate for entity. If the life cycle of domain object is almost zero and it has immutable characteristics, then it is very suitable for becoming a value object. I can understand that sometimes it is really impossible to clearly identify whether a certain object is an entity or value object. In this process, learn or acquire new knowledge until we are enough to identify whether this domain object is entity or value object. According to the definition of aggregate root in DDD, we extend the results of the previous step and select one of the many stickers marked as entity by the team as aggregate root. 
just like the action of the dot sticker, we just post it on entity. Since different color dot stickers are used, the team can recognize and change the aggregate root candidates at any time. When choosing aggregate root, the team can observe which entity has the largest number of references in the entire graph of domain object. This entity are very likely to be a suitable as aggregate root. Next, we need to prepare for cutting large aggregate. One of the most important is to collect and prepare invariant condition. The team can list the collected invariant condition in the upper left corner of the canvas. In the process of collecting, the team still needs the guidance and interaction of domain experts. The team should not create or expand invariant condition on its own. In this step, the invariant condition and the transaction boundary are used as the reference material for cutting large aggregate. During the cutting process, do not consider which database we were used. After cutting the huge aggregate, the team needs to review whether the whole model still conforms to ubiquitous language and follows invariant condition and the transaction boundary. Then we need to reselect the entity that is suitable to be an aggregate root for the many aggregates after division. Of course, this is also the best time to re-examine the entity candidate. Here to help you review the aggregate and aggregate root. The definition of aggregate in DDD is as follows. An aggregate is a cluster of associated objects that we treat as a unit for the purpose of data changes. The aggregate root is the main entity and holds references to the other ones. It's the only entity in the club that is used for direct lookup. The above definition implies that the operation of aggregate will be related to the consistency strategy it decides to use. The team may consider using transaction consistency or eventual consistency. What impact will the adoption have on aggregate cutting? It is. When aggregate is cut too small, it may be necessary to pay a very high price to ensure the consistency of data in the domain knowledge of multiple related small aggregates. So cut to the minimum granule should not be the only key indicator of the team, but it is most appropriate to compromise and evaluate how large aggregate is. And it just means invariant condition and the transaction boundary. Therefore, this involves business rule and we will need to use an element to reckless. At the end of previous step, I mentioned policy. Policy is very likely to affect the key element for our design or selection of aggregate route. Therefore, when we are in the process of aggregate monitoring, we not only consider the invariant condition, but also a transaction scope. We will explain policy in this step. As we mentioned at the end of the previous step, aggregate consistency choice is actually policy. As we do in the previous step, the team needs to collaborate with domain experts and then make a commitment. Do I need to list all policy on aggregate canvas? In fact, you only need to post the policies that affect aggregate design. You don't need to post all the policies on event storming. In the process of aggregate design, the team sometimes feels that certain responsibilities cannot be attributed to an entity or value object. At this time, it can be placed in a domain service. Of course, if during the subsequent discussion, it's found that this responsibility should be the responsibility of an entity or value object, then the team can directly tear off the domain service. So far, the team actually has enough domain knowledge to imagine the prototype of system. So it may be a good idea to design application service at this stage.
Of course, the application service here is a possible candidate identified by the team at the least stage of knowledge. They are most likely to be modified or deleted after the team obtains new knowledge. Why do I put the naming action almost at the end of all? According to past experience, the team is easily bound by the name after they have named it. To make matters worse, the team members do not have enough information because of the completely different understanding of the name that is named at the beginning of the workshop. These problems will lead to the team will spend a lot of time in correcting the proofreading and may even cause team disputes. If you are like me, is a fan to BDD TDD, then this step may be our favorite one. I used to think for a long time how to think about aggregate test cases. I try each different way, and then I found the command is the best position. This position is the most suitable, at least I think so far. Therefore, at this step, I will let the team try to develop test cases one by one. If the team can accept the jokings, then use it directly to write test cases. The advantage of this, it is easy to read and write. And some test frameworks or tools support jokings syntax. The team can further accelerate the introduction and the practice of BDD and the TDD in the team. This is less than. The design of this step is to allow the team to write out all the unfinished projects or any ideas that can improve the design of Aggregate and attract and manage it. Aggregate Canvas can be said to be the mind map of design of Aggregate. With the help of the team, Aggregate is designed to be more perfect. And in the process of this activity, it is fully discussed, thought, and shared. I will continue to update and refine aggregate cameras, hoping to make it better. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks for Arthur's introduction towards to aggregate canvas. Now we know detailed steps to guide them to figure out the aggregate in a more reliable way. It provides more interactions between stakeholders. I want to give you a few takeaway. The First one is to avoid the curse of knowledge. Don't trust you, yourself when you are alone. What you know might not be correct. What your, your imagination might not be happening. Just respect to the field team. Learn from their daily involved knowledge from the domain experts. The second one is um, to engage the teams aggressively. Make sure all of your team members are spoke in some time. There should be no silent shadow in these activities. Facilitate with patience and give team a self feeling. They can tell anything, even something went wrong, but it is okay. While you do so, once we have the different voice, then we have a chance to align with our thought again to see what's the correct domain knowledge. What's the model we have? The next step is to prove it. The most cost-effective way to do is embrace test-driven design programming. If possible, you may also try to have a mock programming. Just try to invite your team to have pair programming to prove what we have. Help each one of us get to the same understanding. Don't apply any specific technology too early or adopt cloud solution at first. You will pay for a lot of resources on the exploration journey. However, it is not helpful at, at first. To have a real and stable model is what we need. It's almost time to say thank you and see you. I would like to leverage the Taiwan traditional props for blessing. Sky Linden? Pray for everyone to be safe during this difficult period. I wish you all the best for the world. In case you have any question regarding to this session, please leave me your comment on YouTube or reach me and also down directly on Twitter or Facebook. 
Finally, thanks for your time for joining this session and welcome you to Taiwan once again. While, while the pandemic goes away, we are wanting you to join our meetup or online session. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this session. And uh, if you want to keep up, go to Twitter, but also we just posted on Twitter the hashtag 5D and you'll see a link to Slack and it's the DDD CQRS ES Slack and we have a virtual DDD um, Slack channel there where we can continue talking. And until next time, and I would like to thank Kim and Arthur for 